And we're back. What I've done here is install the program. Uh, one of the things I noticed about this is uh, don't try and download it and install it from your desktop. That's kind of a seems a little grumpy about that. So I I downloaded it and in, downloaded it into the download directory. And one of the first things you'll have to do is extract it into the uh, actual folder. It uh, comes compressed or zipped. So I did that and then I installed it. Um, one of the first little little issues I had was it wants to kind of install itself just on the C drive. So if you look at that first screen you can see that you can make a new destination or target. And I put it under the program uh, program folder on my machine. And I named it multi PSK and went ahead and installed it and it seemed like it ran just fine so I'm gonna fire it up here for the first time and see what happens. This took about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, okay. Well, they were right. It is a little, I don't know, not wordy, but... Um, it's a little busy. Not sure what all this is. From what I understand, this is a sort of a limited or crippled version. Uh, software is free with limitations for non-commercial use. Uh, it's got the versions and stuff. Looks like, yeah, these are all buttons. They have sort of context to help. I assume somewhere in here you have to, yeah, right there. Serial ports, PC. Mm, okay, here's some stuff about the sound card. Okay, so you might need to set this here. There's a uh, sound card input and sound card output. This is kind of, it must have sniffed this out and figured it out itself on mine anyway. Uh, you keep in mind that this program is intended to transmit also but uh, some of these other features are features people could use well it looks like that's kind of the startup screen so they get going screen here well okay well unfortunately I've got about an hour to wait before I can use this so uh, it's pretty buttony. Here's the the facts. I don't know. Yeah, you really can't see this terribly well. I'm sorry. There's the facts mode there, and some of the stuff it pertains to. Yeah, it looks like that changes around. This must be the fax image window, and this is uh, what's called the uh, looks like the waterfall screen. Let me see if I can make that. No, it's doing something. What that is is kind of a representation of the audio out of your radio. Um, you would see carriers there, like here is a carrier. There's also a, a sort of a different mode or spectrum mode. Looks like the level input level control is here. Videotaping your computer screen is really kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, let's switch it back to the what they call the waterfall mode. So what I'm going to do is just try and uh, uh, connect the output of my Grundig to the uh, input of the computer. Probably have to adjust the levels a little bit. And if you're unfamiliar with that, you can uh, down here in the corner, 
usually your sound control stuff's here if you click on that, or excuse me, right click on that. Um, you've got, you know, audio and the sounds and stuff. We want to fiddle with recording devices. Of course, that flies way up there, and that opens the microphone. Um, here's the mic. You click on that and hit properties. Properties is down in the oh, well, about down there. And let me do that again for you. You probably know this already for each and at the car. And here's the level control, and you can actually listen to the speaker or the microphone. So you may have to tinker with your input a little bit. If you have a regular PC, it might not be so annoying. So we'll wait out a little bit here, and I guess I'll find a couple other things to fiddle with. Watched pot never boils, so this this is actually this always, this kind of stuff always happens to me. I get excited about something, and sure as heck, there's some little roadblock, and it's usually something really annoyingly dumb like I can't listen to this because their schedule <laughs> okie dokie well, I'll tell you what yeah, have a comment or uh, you have a question well if you have a question about the software I'm not going to be able to help you too much my uh, software question days are kind of done so We'll see if we can get this to work. It appears to want to work, and uh, like I said, I guess I can hear things coming into the radio. It looks like it's trying to paint the screen. That's just random noise, so it's not going to have anything meaningful. Looks like right in here there are some other con other controls. I don't know if you can see that real well or not. We'll zoom up here. It looks like there are a number of other controls. Like maybe you can save and print and I'm not sure what these are. It'll stop and other things. Well, actually this has a kind of an interesting synchronize the current picture when the white band transmitted just before the picture itself and takes the IOC. That's kind of clever help. If you hover, it sort of shows it on IOC. To look up what IOC is. Yeah, limited version. So apparently there's a crippled version of this program. And of course, that's what I got hold of. I don't know what it costs to register. I might look that up and see. I suppose we could, just for fun. If you want to hang in there a minute. I can just shut that off. Yes, I'm sure. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, this is the original saw site that I downloaded this from. Let's see. Might be some kind of help or installation help there. I'm not sure what that is. It's some sort of a zip file. And there's some other actually there's some other stuff down here I didn't really look at. see anything about hmm. thought maybe there would be something about the cost of the uh, fancy version but I don't see anything right off the bat let me shut you off here and do some snooping around I'll be back in a little bit take it easy